Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Why do you think God told Abraham, change your name from Abraham to Abraham? It was a principle of faith. Don't call yourself a Zoom father. Call yourself the father of nations. Why do you think he changed the name of Sarai to Sarah? Don't call yourself a Zoom mother. Call yourself mother of princes. Call it. Imagine how fun it will be for their neighbors. Because you are calling Abraham. It doesn't, you think it's a name. But in the Hebrew, when you say Abraham, you are saying, I am father of nations. And they now say, ah, ah, first son has not come. You are now nation. Talk it, talk it. That's how you create it. Spiritual things are not a fluke. They are definite realities. If you know it, you can repeat it anywhere, anytime. Because the more you do it, the more you are perfected in it. The more you do it, the more you gain mastery. Those of you who practice faith, hope you know what you were struggling with five years ago. It's now ties play. That's how you grow. Never catch yourself saying the wrong thing. See, if you say the wrong thing, repent. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. How did I say this? In the name of Jesus, I am not this thing I've said. And say the right thing. Teach yourself like that. After six months, check your life. And tell the difference, if you can. The faith, the righteousness that is of faith does what? Speak it. It speaks. Faith is never quiet. Faith talks. And it's in talking that faith changes the world. James chapter 1. Verse 22 to verse 25. See what the Bible said. I'm trying to help you deal with some things tonight. Because when we finish, all the scriptures you have been hearing and jumping and shouting, you will face that scripture. And you will draw from that scripture. And you will start dealing with circumstances one after the other. For five to ten minutes, we will deal with issues here. And if your faith is steady enough, give them timelines. Timelines. When they were teaching us how to grow in faith, they told us to start giving timelines to things. So that when they happen, we will convince ourselves that they are not coincidences. So somebody comes to you and said, this thing is wrong. In seven days, except I am not called. Hey! When you go back, your heart will now be beating. Did I add, if I'm not called, what if it doesn't happen? The Holy Ghost will keep quiet. And sometimes it doesn't even happen. If it doesn't happen, you go back to God and pray more. It will not fail again. It will not fail again. It will not fail again. You come back. You have a growth. If by tomorrow that growth is still there, I'm not called. After a while, the percentage begins to grow from 2% to 5% to 10% to 15% to 30% to 40%. And then you sit down, somebody calls you. Ah, you prayed yesterday, you said this will happen. I didn't know I woke up this morning, it happened. You say, yes, it should happen. If it doesn't happen, we will be surprised. It's supposed to happen. That's why we said it. They will say, thank you, man of God. You feel like a man of God. You are practicing, you are learning. You are learning, you are growing. Don't talk fear. Talk what you want to see. And you are not just talking out of positivity. You are talking the word of God. That's the difference between you and the world system. This is not positive thinking and positive talking. This is proclaiming scriptures. Proclaiming the Rema word. To create the word you want to see. He said, but be ye doers of the word. And not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. He said, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was. So he said, if you are not doing, you can't retain. You can't become. You can't be blessed. So you do what you say. Don't only talk. In talking, there is no power except that it is backed up with doing. This is why we discourage people. Don't just talk lofty things. When you talk, go to work. Your action is the proof that you believe what you said. We will take this word and you have not started evangelizing your neighborhood. How will you appear in taking the word? Father, we will, stay, we will stand in stadium. We will pack out stadiums for you. From stadia, from one nation to another nation. Everywhere we go, stadiums will be packed. Do you know the size of a stadium? 
have you gone to your backyard to win souls? Have you won any soul in your neighborhood and you want to gather people in the stadium? How will you do it? So faith must be backed with action. We will raise the dead in our generation. We will cast out demons. And people are excited because everybody wants to raise the dead. How many sick people have you prayed for? Because you are in a service and the atmosphere is charged. You start declaring. Declaring things that you don't believe. In this lifetime, even eye, eye sockets that don't have eyeballs will grow out. Unless we didn't come here, we will not go until the world see the power of God. Power. When was the last time you went to pray for a sick person? When was the last time you went to the hospital? We just say things that are lofty and we enjoy it. It's better you go more to do and talk less than to talk and do nothing. In verse 26 of James 2, it says, Faith without works is dead. Listen, everybody you see doing mighty works of faith saw something, heard something, said something, and did something. Nobody appears. Everybody grows through the rank. We stand now, we say in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Now, stop. If you are healed, come. You think it starts like that? I remembered when we have to gather and pray for people with headache. Pray for four hours. You lay hands on them. It doesn't work. You tell everybody, let's do corporate anointing. All of you lay hands. It still doesn't work. You carry the matter, pray overnight and come back. Before you get to a level, they say somebody is demonized. Now we can go. We say today is a demon. Let's go and fight. And we will go pray in tongues with a demonized person for six hours for demon to leave the person. If the person is manifesting, we are happy. The demon has not gone. Home. That we are able to stir that demon to manifest. It means there's something. There's something. So sometimes when you are manifesting, we say, wait, allow this person. Allow this person. Allow this person. <laughs> because that's a milestone that we are able to trouble that demon. Leave this person. Wait, come, come on, get back. Get back. You start moving around. And you start discerning the spirit realm. Sometimes you pick a song and you are singing. Something has started. Manda Kabakaroa. Velele Adia Vuvakida Bakai. Ezezonia Barakado Stevakida Hadaka. You speak some tongues of victory. Then you come back. You devil, where did you come from? Answer me now. If the person speaks, hey, Mako Erekika Tuvakaya, we rule the demonic realm. I command you now, talk to me. Where did you come? And then, when the demon is cast out, then you don't even have discernment to know when the demon leaves. When the person comes down, you, you check, you check. You pray in tongues for a while. If nothing happens again, you say, let her rest. Let her rest. You now go away like a man of God. Let her rest. Let her rest. And then for that month, all your messages... You will speak about how you deal with demons. How you deal with devils. When you see a demon, don't joke with a demon. Go there like a warrior. Deal with that demon until you book out that demon out. No demon must be left behind when you are finished. And then you now grow. A point comes. You show up, you say in the name of Jesus. No drama. Come out. Sometimes they don't even have manifestation, but they go. And you know and the person's life change and then sometimes you show up the moment you come the demons begin to scream and you look at them they know they know what you mean you point at the demon possessed you do like this the person will struggle and struggle and fall down you will not talk and the demon will go but you grew you apply it with your finances. You apply it with your ministry in the area of dealing with demons. Even prayer. You go to pray. 30 minutes is like 10 hours. But you will not leave. You stay there. I have read about prayer. I have preached prayer. Now I must pray prayer. And you pray there. You check your watch. It's 7 minutes. Kakobe. Lele. Lele. Thank you, Father. Boka, boka, boka. Twelve minutes. Uh, manuka. Over, 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 over. Yako, boka, boka, boka. You now sense the anointing. You check. It's 22 minutes. Then the rest of the time, you now start singing. Then you are trying to read 30 minutes. You sing until 30 minutes you go. But you will not stop. 
you will keep praying. You will keep praying. You do that for one month. After three months, the next time you check time is 45 minutes. Ah, uh, how did I reach here? Muscles are already growing. Make it to Kurua. Next time you go to preach about prayer, you tell them if you cannot pray for 40 minutes, you are joking. You don't know what prayer is. Melia <laughs> Freketali Kakagata. And you are pushing. You are pushing. After a while, you go to pray. You check. One hour, 15 minutes. Makura. Now we are ready to pray for the nations. The mantle of prayer has rested. Zene Kumakira. You are now praying. You tell people, listen, listen. This prayer thing is not a joke. How can you be a Christian? You can't pray for one hour. What are you doing? You mean you can't pray for one hour? What kind of Christianity is that? How are you surviving? We breathe by prayer. We breathe by prayer. When you want to take a shot, a shot of prayer is one hour. Come on! And you are pushing. A day now comes. Oh my God. When the momentum begins to rise. Nenda Efelakaya. Ragida Ore Banastavikaha. Only your warm up is three hours. Three hours. Melika Stafikra Takaparak. Dedadida Undrakipak. Savakiro. You are rocking your room. And sometimes you do vigil alone. You don't need congregation. Only you. You start praying from 10 p.m. Manta. Parakada Sutakaya. When you are finishing, it's 5 a.m. It's the ray of light from your curtain that will tell you it's daybreak. And you go, even while you are going to work, you are still praying. Mantariata, Barakaka Stovia, Baragadada Surakataka, Retekadia. By this time, you have grown in prayer. There is no teaching of prayer you will hear to pray for 10 hours. There is no preaching you will preach prayer to pray for 10 hours. You can only grow in prayer by praying. Because faith is action. And so any dimension of faith you want to see, be it finances, be it casting out devils, be it prayer, be it giving, you must practice and be deliberate. Listen, watch your progress. Watch it. Do you know how the prayer team works? After a while, when you start praying for long, you will now move from time. Because when you gym, it's not how many hours that matter. It's the weight you can carry. So now you want to pray, you now write prayer points. I want this person to become pregnant. I want this person to become married. I want doors to open for this person. And as you go to prayer, you are praying those things. That's how you dream in prayer. After a while, you hear that that person is married. After a while, you hear that there is breakthrough. You know something is happening. And a point will come, you don't need to intercede for it to happen. You can walk up to the person and say, before this year is over, you will settle down. Because when you pray, prayer will move and become an atmosphere. And then when you keep praying, the atmosphere will crystallize and become a mantle. So you can carry it anywhere. Carry it anywhere. But you see, you engage it. Faith is action. You don't engage it, you never become it. Any dimension of it, this is Christianity. You can be anything in God. Just put it to practice and remain consistent. Those who taught us told us inconsistency lies the power. You may be praying about something today, you don't have answer. Keep dreaming. That's a wait. The first time I went to the gym, they said do deadlift. I could only carry 40 kg. I held it. I wanted, I said, hey, hope my spinal cord will not break. What's happening here? I dropped it quickly. They had to reduce it. I was carrying. Now I can carry 80 kg. <laughs> a time will come where I will carry 200. 200. I will lift it. That's when I will now snap picture. And <laughs> when I reach there, my muscles will now report that this man is carrying weight. That's how faith works. When the faith begins to grow, the manifestation will become more. You will lead in prayer. Somebody receives encounter. You are leading prayer. Growth vanish from somebody. You are needing prayer. Mestra pain ends. And people will say, oh, when Peter was praying, when Peter was praying, all the other ones needing prayer will now say, ah, ah. We were also praying here. What is the size of your muscle? Christianity is more about daily living than coming to church. Only. You come to church to be equipped. But the real Christianity is daily living. Daily. 
apply faith in every aspect of your life every sometimes we are compared to share these testimonies they are not things we would speak on a normal day but so that you see the practicality we saw something we heard something we said something and we did something that's how faith works. The, the third principle of faith is the principle of action. The fourth principle of faith is the principle of a conditioned atmosphere. Faith works in atmospheres. Anybody who knows faith will tell you. If the atmosphere is not right, faith will be immobilized. And there are five basic atmospheres of faith. The first atmosphere of faith is the atmosphere of prayer. Mark 11, 24. This was Jesus speaking. Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, he said, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So what gets you to having what you, you desire is to believe. But your believing will not work except when you pray. So the atmosphere of prayer is the incubation ground for faith. Now, you know this scripture, he was talking about dealing with mountains in verse 23. Say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast away. If you do not doubt in your heart, you have whatsoever you say. But in doing that, make sure it's when you pray. That's why Elijah did not just show up and say, there shall be no rain. Really? <laughs> you will see wonders. The Bible said in James 5.16, Elijah is a man subject to like passion, just as you are. He said he prayed earnestly that it should not rain. And he said he did not rain on the face of the earth for a period of three and a half years. He said he prayed again and the heavens gave rain. If you read 1 Kings 18, what you see is, Elijah showed up, 17 verse 1. Before God, whom I stand, there shall be no rain. <laughs> That's not what happened. He prayed before he came to stand. And 1 Kings 18, 41 to 44, before he came back to say there will be rain, the Bible said he put his head in between his feet and he was groaning like a woman who was traveling to give birth. So it takes travail for faith to walk. The problem with many Christians is that they hijack a scripture from the Bible and they carry that scripture. They are talking it everywhere. And there is no atmosphere of prayer. That's why they don't see results. You must be incubated with prayer before you make declaration. That's what energizes your words. The first atmosphere of faith is the atmosphere of prayer. The second atmosphere of faith, faith is the atmosphere of a good conscience, pure conscience. If you want to walk in faith, listen, you cannot live maliciously. You cannot live with evil in your heart. It will choke it. The reason many people's faith don't work is because they are somebody has a problem with them and they want to prove a point to that person that God is helping them. In 1 Timothy 1.19, he said, holding faith and a good conscience. He said, which some having put away concerning faith have shipwrecked their faith. So if you don't sustain a good conscience, he said, the way a ship sinks, he said, that's how your faith will sink. So if you want faith to work, your conscience must be pure. This is why a Christian is quick to forgive and forget. You can't carry that weight. It will kill your faith. So sometimes you don't forgive people because they are reasonable. You forgive them for your own health. For your own spiritual health and sanity. Because you walk by faith. How can you now carry something that chokes your faith? So you let them go. So that your conscience towards everybody is clean. Paul said, herein do I exercise myself to sustain a conscience void of offense before God and before man. No wonder he was a faith giant. His heart and his conscience was pure towards God and towards man. I'm telling you why you may practice principle one, two, three, four and still not have result because your atmosphere may be wrong.
you need a pure conscience to walk in faith third atmosphere of faith is the atmosphere of love Galatians 5 6 he said faith walketh by love a man can pray for the sick for the sick to be healed to validate his ministry another man can pray for the sick to be healed because of compassion a thousand and one times the man who prays for compassion sake we have more results than the one who pray to prove a point because when it is love God is involved that's God's nature a man who walks in love implicates God into the atmosphere and so it's important for you to know if it is faith you are talking about you must master the art of walking in love and you know walking in love is not just a feeling Galatians 5.22 showed us how to walk in love is to walk in patience in long suffering in kindness in meekness in cheerfulness that's how you walk in love love has attributes that defines love in compassion in mercy first corinthians 13 from verse 1 to verse 13 galatians 5 22 it shows you all of the attributes of love when you are walking in love you will learn to be patient with people you will learn to be kind towards people you will learn to be merciful towards people you will learn to be generous to people all of that helps faith to be strong bishop Oedeko will say if you want to know his strength his strength is love he says some people look at him and think oh he's a faith, gi faith giant he said his true strength is love he shared a story how many years ago when he was trekking in Kaduna a woman came to church and gave a seed of a beetle and those days beetle Volkswagen is only for the mighty and it would have been befitting for the bishop but when he asked her what do you do the woman said I'm a widow you are a widow where are your children say I have four of them how do they go to school he said God will help he said no God has helped I received this Isaac but I return it back take your car take your children to school he said those days he's preaching he sees somebody everybody is blessed and this person is frowning after service God, why, why were you not blessed I'm blessed sir I'm blessed. it was a great service why were you not excited there's no food at home it's not go the Lord will provide food no take money go and eat food eat while God is providing we come now and see them in their glory and we too we are better and we are making declarations if there's no love faith will not work and anybody that is God who exalted these principles will never lie they must be there I was teaching here passively and I spoke about giving your Isaac and one of our mothers who is an immigration officer brought a Highlander the very next day with papers how do you go to work ma she says ah, that's the car I said no keep it the Lord has received it your heart gave it so keep it because I learned it from these people and I started practicing it. Many people come to my office. More than 60% of the people who came to see me today, when I look at them, they are struggling with their envelope. And this envelope is a sick. You know, it's like this. You know, that's all their faith. It's like the widow that gave two might. I know this faith, God will honor it. But I can't collect that money. I look at them, I now check. Me, I take, I say, take. God has seen your faith. This is the beginning of your answer. Now take this money. This money we multiply. Go. They say, no, sir. I should bring seed. I say, it's not the law. I don't know where you learned it from. You, you must not always be the one to give to the prophet. The prophet too can give to you. You see somebody who borrowed money to come to see you. And then the last 1,000 that he took heaven and earth for him to have. You now collect it and say, ah. I don't have that faith. <laughs> Maybe I need to learn it. I, I say, take, take. Go, you are blessed. Go and prosper. Even the woman that had cancer, they came, they were hoping to give seed. Uh -uh. How much have you spent on chemotherapy? That God has seen this seed. This faith is a functional faith. But take money first. Take this money, go home, eat something. Don't allow anybody malign your faith in the name that you must give. I know the widow gave too might. And if she's exercising her faith, she can. 
but you must be moved with compassion respond by love God sees it and if mighty things will happen through you it is that channel of love that will produce that result the fourth atmosphere of faith is an atmosphere where there is no doubt if you entertain doubt faith will die Matthew 14 31 you are going to see what happened here Jesus was walking on water the disciples thought he was a ghost and shouted they said no it is I and Peter said inspired by faith if it is thou bid me come he said come and Peter started walking on water until suddenly Peter turned and saw the boisterous wind and began to sink and in Matthew 14 31 Jesus ran quickly and held him if Jesus didn't run he would have sunk in God's presence so people can sink in God's presence Jesus moved quickly and held him and pulled him out and said oh ye of little faith why did you doubt that means faith can coexist with doubt faith is not the absence of doubt doubt can exist where faith is but if you allow doubt take precedence it will ship, sink your faith so a man must be careful to kill every form of doubt that the devil tries to bring into his soul and how do you kill doubt you kill doubt by subscribing only to God's opinion the reason people have doubt is because there are too many opinions running in their head so they fluctuate from one frequency to another if they fluctuate to a frequency that is not of God immediately doubt rises so if you want to walk in faith you must kill that atmosphere substitute doubt for believing and believing only and finally what atmosphere warrant faith is an atmosphere where there is no fear in Mark 11 23 Jesus said if you do not doubt in your heart you have whatsoever you say but that foundation is built on fear thank you for watching please kindly like comment subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video and don't forget to share thank you